And so, gentlemen, my government requested me to talk to you unofficially while I'm here at the peace conference. Are we to understand from your remarks that your government wishes us to establish an office of our United Peace Foundation in your country? Yes. Provided your sources of income are independent, controlled neither by governments nor by special interests. Tell him, Boyne. You know about our founder, do you not? Winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, assuredly. Then you know he left his wealth to this organization? Yes, one of the world's largest fortunes. A percentage of our trust funds is now invested in every nation where we have an office. We're interested only in one cause, world peace. One world, if you wish. Yet you have your own secret agents. Why? They're always warmongers. We check on their activities unceasingly. Here's a case in point. Sir Eric Hazarius. <laughs> Warmonger is putting it mildly. War criminal, but try and prove it. Manipulator of fascistic cartels, super salesman of armaments. Rod Stanton, our best agent, is watching Sir Eric now. <laughs> We're being followed again. Rod Stanton, probably. He's a hard man to lose. We've done it before. How about now? Might be a good idea. Something's gone wrong. So some few hours ago, halfway around the world, in faraway San Francisco, death came ironically to mysterious Sir Eric Hazarius. Ironically, because this sinister promoter of destruction died only a few miles from where delegates to the World Peace Conference were meeting to outlaw war. What an awful way to die. I heard what the man said. So now he's gone. So now what's going to happen to us? Yeah. Here we are with a schooner on our hands, chartered for Sir Eric. Yeah, we don't know why or where he was going. Oh, I'm not worried. Sir Eric. That's what I like about you, Marlowe. You are a realist. Don't worry about the dead. You can't help the living. Yeah, but the radio just said... The that radio has just telling everyone exactly that what Sir Eric and I wants everyone to believe. Sir Eric Azarius is dead. Call me Jeffrey London. And only Jeffrey London. Ah, uh, who are you? I am Sir Eric's confidential secretary. Oh, yeah, I've heard of you, Melbourne. Mr. Melbourne. Secretaries don't mean nothing to me. I take my orders from Sir Eric. You have been taking orders from me for a long while, and also has Sir Eric. As we must work together now, you may as well know the truth. A secret the world has yet to discover. I am the man back of Sir Eric. Sit down. Well, talk about surprises. A new boss? Sir Eric isn't dead like we thought. Kelso was in San Francisco. Oh, Kelso, huh? Valuable man, Kelso. Smart, perfect double two. He sure was. You never could tell which of them was which. <laughs> Neither could the police. Well, that's the way it goes. A defective steering gear, car burning, and poor old Hamlin with him. <laughs> well, having this tub and a native crew ready instead of Sir Eric's yacht is beginning to add up. I don't get it. I do. We won't be followed this trip. Your guess is perfect. 
Marlow. <laughs> I am tired of the Eric being under constant surveillance by the FBI, Scotland Yard, the Sûreté. And Rod Stanton. Yeah, aren't we all? Where were you and Sir Eric hiding? In a villa above the harbor. We have been there for the last three months. Hey, all these precautions make this sound like something really big. Big? Suppose I am on the track of a defense against the atomic bomb. Every nation in the world would want to buy it. Sure, and the one that does get it will be the boss, because it's only safe to use the atomic bomb if nobody can use it against you. Yeah, but how does this schooner tie in? Merely a blind. It will take you and Sir Eric part way. What about you? I'm going ahead. Going where? To Pendrang. Pendrang? Never heard of it. You will. After leaving the schooner, you will fly in over the Himalayas. But what has an out-of-the-way hole like that got to do with atomic bombs? Yeah. I have reason to believe the only mineral that makes defense against the atomic bomb possible is there and nowhere else. Splendid, splendid. And now, have you prepared Zalibar for Jeffrey London? There you are, gentlemen. You are now looking at Jeffrey London Esquire. Pendrang, sir. Landing field for Zalabar. Is there any transportation into town? You'll probably have to wait, Mr. London. Passengers aren't expected this time of the year. <laughs> it's fantastic. Being in the land of eternal summer after coming through the snow and ice of the Himalayas. The next five months, no planes can make the trip in. I can understand why you're so anxious to get started back. We'll have the gas sent out just as soon as we get into town. Well, thank you, sir. That'll give me time to check the engines. Thank you. TS-37, TS-37, Ringo calling, TS-37. Perhaps information comes sooner than we expected, my dear husband. Ringo is calling on the radio. Watch the desk, Lakana. Did you just come in on that plane? Yes. Anybody else come with you? No. Are you expecting somebody? Yes. Jeffrey London, the man I work for. I had word that he was to arrive on that plane. He did, Professor Greb. But he just said that no one besides... Sir Eric? <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> the fact, Greb, that you didn't recognize me is proof that we have nothing to worry about. Well, someone must be wise to the trick. Our man at Bakwar reported by radio that the pilot who was to fly your plane was found unconscious after the plane took off. Come with me, Marlowe. I picked up the two men according to orders and landed them here at the Zalabar field. Another man whom they call Jeffrey London is with them. Anything interesting about this man, London? He's backing Dr. Elmore's expedition and is convinced that Dr. Elmore is going to be the one to find the lost city in the Pendrang jungle. Does London look, act, or talk at all like Sir Eric? No, except for one little thing. He seems... Nice timing on Greb's part and on mine. At least that's making the best of a bad job. There's no doubt I'm not as safe as I thought I was. I'll send Johnson back to help you take care of things. What about the archaeological work? How's it getting along? Very well. Dr. Elmore and his expedition have been in the jungle for some weeks looking for the lost city. Mm. And your work, Greb? My laboratory is all set up underground. Has Dr. Elmore any idea what is really going on? Not the slightest. He's all wrapped up in lost cities, ancient symbols, forgotten civilizations. And now, have you prepared Zalabar for Jeffrey London? Prepared Indra, you mean? 
She is Zalabar and Pendrang. Indra, Indra. Oh, yes, the lady who rules Pendrang. That's right, from the Light of Asia Casino. Out about it this time, Ed. I've got a system at last that'll beat the rude Latvian. Uh-huh. When does your next check come? Within the fortnight. They come fast enough that the war's over, don't they? Mm. How much you owe me? A quid or so, old man. I'll pay you and everybody within an hour after I cash that check and start betting. You'll pay me before you start losing it. You might to say. Jeffrey London's secretary? No one else. I suffer from indigestion, and our drinking water isn't all it might be. Take one. Try it later. You might need it. I can't digest poison. No, thanks. You live longer that way. Tell me, what are you doing here? If you don't mind, I explain to Indra. Not in the least. Go right in. Come in. Welcome to Pendrang and to Zalabar, to the Light of Asia Casino, Mr. Malburn. I thought surely you would call before this. Unfortunately, a secretary has duties. I have been preparing for the arrival of Geoffrey London. Geoffrey London? You should have said Sir Eric Hazarius. And you, Mr. Malburn, are no secretary. You have been the man behind Sir Eric all these years. Neither Mr. London nor I are honored by your mistake. Secretary or secret leader? Sir Eric Hazarius or London? What matter? It matters a great deal to me, and I think also to Mr. London. Oh, but does it really, Mr. Malbert? <laughs> You're a magnificent actor. But flatter me by telling the truth. A beautiful lady should always be flattered. You're right. Thank you, Mr. Malbert. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I inherited this casino, the only one allowed in Pendrang. I have my own police, make my own laws. I also enforce the laws of the people for them, at their request. By so much I rule them, but I am not responsible to them. In plain language, I can be punished by the people for breaking their laws and customs. And punished by me for breaking a law that I make up after you've broken it. In other words, I can do nothing without your consent. Exactly. And what will this consent cost me? One third of whatever you're looking for, using that archaeological expedition and Geoffrey London as camouflage. <laughs> And so I repeat, gentlemen, what I said almost a month ago. It was not Sir Eric Azarias, but his double that was killed when his car went over the cliff and burned. But you have no proof, Rod. That's just a hunch. More than that, Mr. Bowen. Oh, I know you thought you saw Sir Eric light his cigar with his left hand when you know him to be right-handed. Moreover, you have since been unable to find any new evidence to support your theory. That was true until an hour ago. But this telegraphic report from Tal Shan confirms my opinion. It's just been decoded. Arrangements, gentlemen, mean some sort of a plan. Tal Shan and I happen to know that Marlowe and Johnson are secret agents for Sir Eric. And you want us to gamble with you, I suppose, on the chance that you're right? Yes, sir. And send me at once to Pendrang.
Why anybody, Miller, would try and fly into Pendrang now gets me. Fools are usually brave. Sometimes they're lucky. This one's named Rod Stanton. Lucky so far. I was told I was to sign for the gas. Is that right? Right, Mr. Stanton. Here. I'd turn back if I was you. Headwinds? Worse in the world. That's why no one can get into Pendrang by air this time of year. You can't get in, period. Just as bad Oberlin. The passes are all frozen solid by now. Thanks, I'll take a chance. Another thing about fools, Miller. They never take advice. That's what Sir Eric figured about this one. I'll radio Zalabar. He's out with Greb, establishing himself here in Zalabar as Jeffrey London. Oh, smart, but what's the matter? Something up? What's up, Marlo? Well, a radio message for Sir Eric. You two might as well get used to it now as later. Reports for Sir Eric are reports for me. Give it to me. This report for Magaga makes me feel better. Mm, good man, Miller and Ward. Yeah, but how come you ever let Stanton get as far as Agaga? Geography, Johnson. Geography. Oh, anything that happens in the middle of the Himalayas can't be blamed on us, huh? <laughs> exactly. Lucky so far, no farther. show myself now. You get tired and cold back here stowed away. And now that it's night, I don't think you'll return to Aga Aga just to put me off. You're right. Now look, I haven't got time to be polite. You're here, so you may as well know the truth. I do. The odds are against us getting over the hump. That's why I didn't ask you to take me with you at Bakwa. I knew you wouldn't. It's worse than that. I'm flying this route, the most dangerous in the world, for the first time in my life. I know that, too. None of the pilots would take you. OK, then, for whatever comes. Who are you? Marjorie Elmore. Professor Elmore of the Jeffrey London Archaeological Expedition is my father. I've heard of him. A lot of help you are to him. Meaning, I suppose, that he may have to look for a lost daughter instead of a lost city? Meaning just that. You hear what I hear? That engine's going fast. Where are the parachutes? In the rear compartment. They aren't here. Somebody must have wanted more than we do. That's no accident. I've only got one chance now. TS-37, Stanton calling TS-37. And the engines are missing badly. I can't possibly get over those mountains. Just what is your present position, Rod? According to my chart, I'm uh, five miles southeast of Kalmatha Peak. There's a sort of plateau below that peak. Make a forced landing there. I'll get a searching party out. I'll see if I can make it. 
If the searching party misses you, I'll fly my plane out the first thing in the morning. Wish me luck. I'm trying to make the landing now. We better go out and see how we're fixed. We can't stay here. We'll be in constant danger from slides. How will a search party find us? We'll head towards Hamafa Peak. I gave that as my bearing. It'll be tough going. Yes, this is Tal Shan. What about the search for Stanton and the girl? Have you started yet? Your message had to be relayed many miles. The mountain men are gathering now for the search. on your plane, Rod. I know I'm a hindrance, but I can't go any farther. I'd be glad you came along, Marjorie, if we weren't in such danger. We'll rest a while. Now, it's daylight. Either the search party or Tal Shan should spot us. 